still, baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna buy you a mockingbird. Miss Fat Mockingbird, don't say. Mama's gonna buy you a diamond ring. Maggie was born 10 weeks premature. She is now part of a study at Brigham and Women's Hospital that tests whether hearing a mother's voice and heartbeat, even when their mothers can't always be with them, can improve the health of these tiny, developing babies. The study is being led by Amir Lahav, who came up with the idea after his own wife gave birth to twins three and a half months early. All the doctors prepared us for the worst. It was Lahav's first time in a neonatal ICU, or NICU for short. With the background in brain research and neuroscience, as well as a stint as a musician, Lahav was especially attuned to how the sounds of the NICU might be affecting the baby's brains. With all these background noise and sound and alarms that go off every second, and is this really the optimal environment for the brain to mature and develop? So, Lahav asked himself a question. Can we actually give these babies what they were supposed to get if they were still in the womb? Lahav began a research study at Brigham and Women's last summer, providing babies with what he describes as biologically meaningful sounds instead of just noise. A day or two after a mother gives birth to a premature baby, she is brought into this tiny recording studio at the hospital. We record the mother's voice and we record the mother's heartbeat. Lahav and his staff then alter these recordings. Add in low pass filters and make the sound to uh, be very muffled. As if the baby is actually hearing his mother's voice and heartbeat in the womb through the amniotic fluid. They play the final recording through speakers mounted inside the baby's incubator or isolette. Maggie's mother, Nicole, remembers being brought into the tiny recording booth shortly after giving birth. Baby girl. Initially, I was like, okay, you know, two and a half minutes to fill up of just talking, like, to really not my baby, <laughs> you know, like, just imagining that I'm talking to her. I was surprised, you know, a few times my voice cracked and I was like, oh gosh, you know, like, it was, it was very emotional. Hi Maggie, it's Mama. I wanted to tell you about all the people that are waiting for you at home. Number one is your big sister Abby. The study is still in its earliest phases. Lahav has seen preliminary hints that hearing the mother's voice may have positive short-term effects on babies while they are in the NICU. But ultimately, he hopes to test whether the auditory treatments will have more profound effects on later development. What we really hope to see is that down the road, when these babies are um, getting into the age of two, three, four years of age, that we see much less developmental problems like attention deficits, learning disabilities, cognitive issues that are very common to babies that are born before 32 weeks gestation. For the moment, though, perhaps the greatest effects are being experienced by the parents. We have this opportunity to leave a piece of me here and even if it's just to help us emotionally get through this, we'll take that too. Oh, excuse me, sorry. 